Well, lesson six, and uh, this is going to be a, a big study today, and I'll, we're just going to have to get into it, and there's a lot of material to cover. But uh, I want to focus with you here uh, in Revelation chapter 1, and, and probably you're going to need your Bibles today. Uh, the uh, passages of Scripture we're going to look at are going to come up, and you're going to be able to view those, but you may want to look at this um, uh, firsthand in your own Bible. I want to look at, uh, again, the prologue of, as we've been dissecting uh, through this material. The message of the book of Revelation, when you get into the prophecy of Revelation, the message is Jesus. Hey, he, he's the one that's being revealed. And all the purposes that we have for our life are tied to Him. That's the basic opening statement. We've been dealing with this next sentence in the first verse, uh, which in the NIV says, He made it known by sending His angel to His servant John. The New King James, the New King James translation, which I like better in this verse, or in this sentence, is He sent and signified it by his messenger, or by his angel, to his servant John, which is a little bit different. Um, we looked at signified in that verse yesterday, or in that sentence yesterday. He sent and signified it. Signified meaning that uh, it is a speaking now, a sign, it's in sign language, speaking now, the present tense of when it was spoken about events that were going to transpire into the future. And so all the book of Revelation is, is hey, God is speaking about what's going to take place, not when it, the purpose is not when it's going to happen, but the purpose is, hey, I'm bringing about my plan, which is just like prophecy in the Old Testament. I'm bringing about my plan. I know what's going to transpire in your life. Hey, and there's, the enemy's going to try to stop that, blockade that, barricade that. There's going to be problems in your life through that. But hey, nothing can stop the plan of God in your life. Nothing can stop what I'm going to do in your life. God has a plan. We're to give ourselves to that plan. Which means, hey, that this bringing about of, of the kingdom of God, the bringing about of God's plan, I'm to give that and live in that perspective. And, and, and literally, I'm working not for the details here. I'm working for the building of God's plan. And God's going to bring about that plan through my life. Man, I want that to happen. I want to continue looking at this verse, which really is bigger than the signified context, the signified language. It's, He sent and signified it by His angel to His servant John. Uh, really what we want to center on in this study are two things. Number one, uh, what is a minister? And what is the minister's ministry? Or you might even be able to say it is, is uh, who, who is a minister or who can minister and what's their ministry? Um, I've always uh, kind of uh, understood ministry and ministers uh, in, in terms of what I picked up at the local bookstore, Christian bookstore, which is uh, the 12 steps of, of you know, uh, ministry. You want to minister, you go and you do these things and activities and these are the things that a pastor does. and hey, The 12 steps of effective ministry, those kind of things. Uh, which are not all bad, but they need to be, there's a lot of perspective that needs to help with that. The ministry here and the minister who is ministering is, is, fits within the holiness concept. And again, I don't know how you, what your language is and what holiness means to you, but what holiness ne means to me is that first off, everyone is ministers. Everyone is ministers. Everyone is a minister. We are all ministers. And ministers are conduits, are vessels, are avenues. That's what a minister is. It's a, a minister is like a stage, a platform by which God ministers. I'm a vessel by which God moves through. I'm a conduit by which He flows through my life. Messenger and ministry. I want to talk to you about those two things. The first thing is, is in our sentence. It says, He sent and signified it by His angel. I want to talk to you about that word angel. It can be translated angel or messenger. Okay? Angel, angel or messenger. Um, typically, when I read this, uh, I think of when he says he made it known or he uh, sent and signified it by his angel. When I, when I read that word angel, I think of a heavenly being, an angel. It's the, it's the Matthew chapter 27 scene, which is incredible. It's, uh, you know, the angel 
uh, comes down and the guards are guarding the tomb and the angel, his very presence as he descends, causes an earthquake and the guys, all those guards fall over and the text, the, the, the New King James says they, they shook for fear of him and became like dead men, which means they passed out. <laughs> they fainted. Okay, he says, well, this angel comes down, the power and authority, and he comes down and he grabs this stone that's blocking the tomb and he hurls that thing aside, which is monstrous. He hurls that thing aside. Can you imagine? Muscles bulging. Wow. And he throws it aside and he goes over and he sits on it. Just hanging. You know, just sits there. I mean just ooh, powerful, powerful scene. Angelic being. When I think of angels, that's what I think of. You know, the stories of Michael, the archangel, and Gabriel. These phenomenal, big, strong, casting the enemy out of heaven. Those kind of angels. That's what I think of. But when you look up that word, angel, in the original language, and you trace that word throughout the Bible, what you're going to find is most often, this is interesting, most often that word, though it is applied to the angelic being, oftentimes it doesn't refer to an angelic being, but it refers to a, a human being. Uh, let me give you a couple examples of this. Um, the messenger idea in the Greek translation of the Old Testament, the Septuagint, this word messenger is used referring to people. Let me give you an example of this. Talking about David and Bathsheba, where David sees Bathsheba and, and that whole thing takes place. Uh, David's up on the rooftop, Bathsheba's bathing, and this is what happens in verse 4 of chapter 11. Um, then David sent messengers to get her. Then David sent messengers to get her. Now, were those angelic beings? Yeah, came down there, oh, flexing their muscles and bright shining lights. Oh man, messengers, guys in the palace. You know, David rings a bell, they run in, yes sir, hey, go down and get Bathsheba. Yeah, she were 56th in Main, go get her. And so they run and get her. They're the messengers, they're human beings. That word can be, it can be used for angels or, or human beings. Let me give you another example. Uh, you come in the New Testament, found it interesting, it was used in the book of Luke describing John's messengers. When John's in the dungeon cell, he's in prison, he sends messengers to Jesus. Here's where it says, at that very time, Jesus cured many who had diseases and sicknesses and evil spirits and gave sight to many people who were blind. So he replied to the messengers. Goes down a few verses, verse 24 of chapter 7. After John's messengers left Jesus. After John's messengers left, Jesus began to speak to the crowd. So they're John's messengers. Angelic beings? No. Human beings. And, and it was even more... Uh, uh, interesting to me, I looked up that word in the book of James, that Greek word that we have in our passage for angel, and it's translated spies in James chapter 2, verse 25. In the same way was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction. Spies, that's that word. So, that word doesn't always refer to an angelic being. That word can refer to human messengers. Now, in our passage, it's probably an angel. He, may, he sent and signified it by his angel. But, it doesn't have to be an angelic being. In fact, when you trace that word as it appears in the first few chapters, at the beginning of each of the churches, of, of uh, the seven churches of Asia Minor, at the beginning of each one of these churches, are one of these angels or messengers. For instance, chapter 2, the very outset of that letter. To the angel of the church in Ephesus. Right. That's church Ephesus. Smyrna, they all begin like this. To the angel of the church in Smyrna. Right. Okay. Pergamum, verse 12. To the angel of the church in Pergamum. To the angel. Now that can be angel or messenger. Now, the question is, well, is that angelic beings? Did an angel go to that church, show up every Sunday, wings blaring, white, hey, big muscles, get any seat it wanted in the whole place? I mean, is it, is it angels that shows up to church on Sunday? Or, or was it some angelic being who would come and... Hey, what's that deal? Scholars tell us, my opinion as well, is that that's probably not an angelic being, it's probably a human being. In fact, probably was a, was a, a public speaker who was the messenger to these congregations. Our, our culture today, we call that guy a pastor. He's the angel. He's the messenger. Now, it's really powerful because it establishes what a messenger is. He's sent and signified 
it through his messenger, by his messenger. And a messenger can be angel or human being. Can be either one. In the seven churches, and angels are all over the book of Revelation, but the seven churches, that angel's probably a human being by which the message was sent. Now, we got the first part. What is a minister? A minister is a message who is relaying the message. Okay? A, 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 let me say it again. A, a, a minister is a messenger who's relaying the message. Okay? Now, what is, what is the ministry? of the minister. Ah, well the minister, if the ministry, okay, if a minister is simply a messenger who's conveying a message, then the ministry of the messenger, okay, the ministry of the messenger, who is the minister, is the, is the very act of delivering the message. That sounds really confusing, doesn't it? Let me say it again. If, the mess, if what a minister is, is simply a messenger who conveys a message, then the ministry of that minister is literally the message by which he's uh, delivery. Whoa. It's the message. Hey, my ministry as a, mini as, as a minister is literally playing the part of a messenger who delivers a message, which is just powerful. Let me give you an example of this. The emphasis, this is what, this changed my life, the emphasis and the power and the authority that is in the minister, and, and I wouldn't even say it like that, the Power and authority never comes from the minister. It always comes from the message. Okay? The power and the authority never reside in the minister himself. Okay? I, I, I don't have any power and authority. The power and authority always comes from the message. Okay? The power and the authority always comes through the message. Now, you see that in our passage. In our passage it says, He sent and signified it by his angel. Okay? Now, in the, in the New King James, you'll note that the it is italics. It's in italics. He sent and signified it. Well, what's the it? The it is the message. That's what's sent and signified. And the it actually refers to the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place, what must quickly take place. So the it is the revelation of Jesus Christ. That is the message. Oh, get, put this together. That's the message. So the message is the it. And that is what is sent and signified. And we know this because we talked about the signified last lesson. What was signified? The message, which is the unveiling of Jesus Christ, the plan of God that's being revealed. I mean, hey, that's what's taking place. And we're to give ourselves. And okay, that's what's signified. Okay? So the, the message is sent and which is the revelation of Jesus Christ. The message is sent and signified by or through the messenger. Okay? The message is sent and signified by the messenger. It's really important to me to note the word sent there is the Greek word apostello. And the Greek word apostello is a sending with great authority. It's a sending with great authority. So. What, who has authority is not the messenger in our passage because the messenger is not sent. The message, it, the message is sent. Look at it. He sent, what did he send? He sent and signified it through or by the messenger. So the power and the authority is not in the messenger. The power and the authority is in the message. Whoa! Imagine that. See, I'm not the one who has power and authority. It's the message, man. See, I'm not going to change your life. I'm just a man. I'm Jeremiah. What's going to change your life is the message. And what's the message? Jesus Christ is unveiled. Now put this together. If the message is Jesus Christ being unveiled, the revelation of Jesus Christ, and that's to come through my life, I am to be the very event by which the power and the authority of Jesus as he is unveiled takes place through my life. I, I am that messenger. And this is really significant when you come into the seven churches of Asia Minor. Okay? The seven churches of Asia Minor, this is a message that's been given to these seven churches. Think about this. When Jesus comes to John in chapter 1, and he says in verse 11, write on a scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches, and he writes those, Okay, Jesus is not showing up to church on Sunday here in the seven churches. He said, write this down on a scroll and send it to the seven churches. And that is given through the messenger. 
And all of what's taking place in, in, in chapters 2 and 3, in my translation, is all in the red letters. Which means Jesus is the one who's speaking. But you're like, hold on. Jesus isn't the one who's speaking, it's the messenger that's given this, which is probably the pastor. But we use that language all the time. See, we come to church uh, and, and the revival happens. And we go home and we say, man, God spoke to me tonight. And of course, everybody scratches their head and says, I thought Jeremiah spoke. Oh, I thought the pastor spoke. I thought the evangelist. Hey, I thought it was the missionary. Well, yeah. But the, hey, they were very, the very stage. They were just the event by where the message, which is Him, comes through and speaks and reveals. And that's the ministry of the messenger. Hey, that's, it's, it, that's what the ministry is. See, my ministry is not preaching. My ministry is not, you know, building buildings in a foreign land. My ministry is not hanging out with teenagers. I mean, come on. I mean, you can do all that stuff and not, and not be ministry. My ministry is for my life to be the very vehicle by which the revelation of Jesus Christ is conveyed. The message, the message, which is Him being unveiled. That's the message. He is unveiled through my life and I carry the message in my very being. I am a messenger. Because all a messenger is one who is the vehicle by, uh, by which a message is extended through. So I, I, that's my ministry. I'm a messenger. Now, I don't, I don't know what you, I don't know what uh, uh, that looks like to you, but could you imagine going down to your high school as a high school teacher, or maybe you're a teen, going down to your high school and sitting in math class and being a minister? And what, what do you mean by being a minister, Jeremiah? I mean by being a messenger. Well, what's the message that you're delivering? I, the message I'm delivering is Jesus. He Himself, the very person of Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, is unveiling Himself through my life. Through my life, man. And I'm the vehicle. And that's my ministry. So you're a minister. Yeah, what do you do? Oh, just reveal Jesus. Just dump Jesus in my world. And the power and the authority of life change is always in the message. I wonder what would happen if you gave yourself to that in your job. Let's say you're watching this on Sunday. Or maybe it's a Wednesday night thing. I wonder what would happen on Thursday morning, or if it's Sunday, on, on Monday morning at your job. Whenever you watch this. The next day you go to work. If you go down to your job and look at yourself, see in the perspective of the kingdom that God has a plan. He's protecting. There's all kinds of things that are happening. But God is leading this plan. You give yourself to that plan. Hey, you give yourself to that plan. Literally working for a kingdom that's not of this world. And, and the third aspect of the plan language there is that, hey, God's going to use me to bring about that plan. Well, how is He going to use you? You're a messenger, man. You're a messenger. And what's the message? Him. That I go down in my job and that's my ministry. And the plan is that God wants to use my life to display who He is in my workplace. And people are going to see Jesus. You realize that you're the only Jesus that some people are ever going to see. What an opportunity. Let it be so in my life.